Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how our team at Simply Schedule Appointments edits our social media posts to make them accessible to everyone, including people with screen readers or those that are hard of seeing. On the right hand side here I have my text editor pulled up with the drafted social media posts and it says let's get social followed by the moon emoji, the fox emoji, and then three hashtags. Say fun, let's chat, and party. And then here I have a link to our help center and I wanna link people directly to this section here. So I'm going to walk you through our checklist on how to make sure we're making these accessible for everybody. So to get started, I'm going to begin with the message, let's get social. As you can see here, I have a custom font applied to it and I used it this website called lingojam.com to generate this custom font. As you can see here, they can get pretty wild like this one right here. Um, and the problem with these is that they can be very hard to read for people hard of seeing. And then not only that, people with screen readers will have a very difficult time reading messages like this one. So this one is reversed. We try to avoid using custom fonts and just using the regular editor. But before I jump into Twitter, let me just draft it down here. And so here at the bottom, I'm using a plain text editor, whereas in the top, I'm using a rich text editor. And that just makes it easier for me to copy and paste. And then the next thing on our checklist is to either limit the use of our emojis or just use them for decorative purposes, not try to use emojis in a way to communicate. For example, this moon emoji here, it's kind of giving you a little side eye, so a little meaning that people with screen readers don't necessarily get. A person with a screen reader, they would actually have the full name of the emoji read out to them. Essentially read, let's get social, full moon face, and then followed by fox or fox face. So when you're using emojis, try to limit the number of emojis you use and the fact that people with screen readers will have to hear out the actual name of the emoji. So here, let's get social. Maybe instead I could use a speech balloon emoji to convey the fact that I want you to send me a message or I would maybe instead just use our fox emoji, which is the mascot for our plugin. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy over the fox emoji. I'm just gonna use it as a decorative piece. And so that looks a little better there. Um, and then the next thing on our checklist would be to limit the use of hashtags and try to put them at the end. Um, we also recommend that you use camel case when you need to. Let's just say I wanna use let's chat and then we'll use camel case as well. That way somebody with the screen reader will actually read out let's chat instead of L-E-T-S-C-H-A-T. And using camel case hashtags will also help those with dyslexia and other cognitive disabilities. And we only want to limit it to one and we want to make sure it's at the end of our message. So here we have let's get social fox and then the screen reader will read out let's chat because we are using the camel case to distinguish where one word ends and one word begins. Next thing on our to-do list would be to shorten the links when we can. So if you see here, we have this really long link and what happens with screen readers is that they will read out the link letter by letter. So here it'd be H-T-T-P-S colon forward slash forward slash and then read out the rest of the link and sometimes some websites can get away with this shorter website domains but in this case i've also included this little anchor here which makes it absurdly long um, and i wouldn't want somebody to sit through c o n t a c you know etc so i would actually take this and then use a short link shortener website or link shortener tool um sort of like bitly.com and then shorten my link. So then I'll add that to the end. Um, so usually you wanna add the hashtags to the end unless you're using a link, um, especially on Twitter, it always picks up the link at the very end and then it makes it into a, like, a special link format. Um, so now we have a much more accessible post that I can post onto Twitter. So next we want to add in our image. So there's other rules and our checklist that we wanna make sure we look at before we post. People using screen readers will actually read out the name of the image. So as you can see, I've added face with cowboy and then a couple numbers after that. So to help people using screen readers, most social media platforms 
now offer a description or alt text field where you can add in a little bit more context for people who are using those screen readers. So a little bit more context and I'm adding a little bit more meaning to it um, to kind of describe what I want to convey with this image that I'm posting as opposed to just saying cowboy face hat or whatever my image was called. If the social media editor or whatever platform you're posting to doesn't have this alt text feature, um, which I know Twitter didn't have for a while up until very recently. You can also add in a little bit more context in the tweet itself or in the text field itself. So something like this, adding a little description and referencing the image that you're including in the post will help people with screen readers as well. And that is about it. Um, I hope this checklist was helpful and let us know if you have any other ways you make your posts accessible in the comments below or if you think we missed anything. Thanks.